This is how UEFI boot works. This will be especially useful to Linux users. So this is your motherboard and it has a piece of hardware called NVRAM, Non-Volatile Random Access Memory. This NVRAM stores the UEFI boot manager, which is a list of entries where each entry has a partition ID and a path to some file stored inside that partition. In this case, entry one points at this partition and at the file called bootloader.efi, which is stored in this same partition. Uh, entries two and three point at the same partition, but at a different file stored in that partition. So these partitions are very special. They are, they are called the ESP, EFI system partitions. And an EFI system partition is simply a partition containing a FAT12, 16 or 32 file system, containing one or more bootloaders. And as we saw before, the EFI boot manager is a list of entries stored in our motherboard, where each entry points at a bootloader stored in an ESP. So as you can see here, uh, one ESP can contain more than one bootloader. So what happens when your computer is turned on is that your firmware looks at this list and tries to boot from the first entry and it loads this bootloader into memory and this bootloader in turn will uh, execute the operating system which is stored here. Now let's imagine that the, this device was disconnected so the firmware will look at this, the partition is not available, so it will jump at the next entry and execute this bootloader, shimx64.efi. And this one will probably execute the uh, Linux operating system, which is stored here. Okay. And let's take a look at... So here, uh, this is the same thing we, we saw before. And the boot manager entries can be generated by the firmware if it deems it necessary, but also operating systems add an entry to the boot manager when they are first installed. So this is generally not necessary. And operating systems also create an ESP if one doesn't already exist. And another important thing to mention about the EFI boot manager is that the user can manage uh, this manager in two ways. One is using the firmware user interface, which is the good old F12 on boot uh, technique, which loads, loads you into the UEFI user interface. Or you can also manage it through an operating system that is booted in UEFI mode. So if you're running Linux, you can use the EFI boot MGR tool. I'm going to do that now. So sudo EFI boot MGR. This will give me a list of uh, entries. So I have two entries right now. And I'm currently booted into entry zero, which is this one. But the boot order, look at this, was one and then entry zero. So that means that my system tried to boot from entry one, but the device was not available and it booted to entry zero instead. If you use EFI boot manager with the dash v flag it will print uh, more information in this case we'll print the partition id and the file which is what we talked about before the partition id and the file so this is the partition uh, the esp the efi system partition and this is the file which is the bootloader which will in turn load the operating system that i'm currently running and this is another entry, this is another partition on a different drive which is currently disconnected and this is the bootloader for that entry. Okay, now let's take a look at my at my disk. As you can see it has a GPT partition table. I have three partitions. The first one is the ESP. And this is my EXT4 partition where my operating system is 
installed. So what happens when I boot up the device is that the firmware looks at this ESP and at the file, which is a bootloader, and this bootloader stored here actually loads the operating system stored in this other partition. Okay. So an ESP is a partition that contains a FAT uh, file system, is labeled as an ESP in the GPT partition table, and has one or more bootloaders, .efi files, which are the kind of file that UEFI uh, can execute, the firmware can execute. So if you don't know what a partition table is, it's simply a way to describe the partitions in a drive. The old way is MBR, and GPD is the newer format used by UEFI. So this is what we saw before, how to see the partition of your, the partition table type. So in my case, it's GPT. If you were using MBR, uh, FDisk would say DOS here instead of, instead of GPT. And what we've seen until now, this kind of thing, is the UEFI native entries. But there is also the fallback path entries, which are similar to this, but instead of defining a file, they just define a partition. So it would work like this. Oops. So this part, they only define a partition. So what happens is that the firmware looks at this partition and looks at a specified path, a previously, uh, a path that is a standard. So the path is EFI boot boot x64.efi. So this is the method that live system ISOs use and it's only intended for temporary boot media. Uh, there's also BIOS compatibility mode entries, which basically uh, try to emulate what the BIOS system would do. And yeah, that's the basic functioning of UEFI boot. If you want to know more in detail uh, about UEFI boot, I recommend this excellent article about uh, by Adam Williamson, which goes into deeper details. And it's a really good article. I recommend it if you want to know more. But yeah, if you if you only want to manage your UEFI boot manager, I recommend using the EFI boot MGR2. Uh, it's available in all Linux distributions with the same name, so you can install it in your distribution. And yeah, that's all. Thanks for watching. And if you like the video, uh, give it a thumbs up. Goodbye.